The East Asian growth miracles post-World War II show a case where centralized control of education did extremely well. Japan was the first East Asian country to experience a growth takeoff, but you can include South Korea and Taiwan under the same general heading, as these countries moved in a small number of decades from being fairly poor to being completely developed. In spite of the differences across these countries, one can speak in broad terms of a general East Asian model for educational success. It would have the following features. First, there was a very rapid growth in education at all levels in these countries preceding and during their periods of having an economic boom. This growth in education meant more investment in human capital, it drove agricultural productivity, it drove more general increases in productivity, and it also improved the general health of the population. Interestingly, in the East Asian model, education as a percentage of GDP is not actually so high in relative terms compared to the incomes of these countries. In part, it seems that education is working well because the quality of education is high, and this high quality of education is being enforced by quite a high quality bureaucracy. And even if there is corruption at some levels of these East Asian governments, the parts of the bureaucracy which are overseeing educational systems do not seem to be very corrupt, and they're more interested in enforcing high standards for education than in simply protecting teacher interests. There is, in general, centralized control over schools in these societies. There is, in general, an emphasis on primary education, and often some neglect, actually, of higher education. The students in these systems have ended up with strong cognitive skills. They do extremely well on national and international tests, and there is a strong emphasis on vocation and technical skills in these educational systems. Although there is centralized control over these educational bureaucracies, typically, part of what makes these systems work so well is their decentralized element. So it's a combination of centralization and decentralization working together in a way which is extremely effective. The decentralization comes from at least two components. First, there is extremely strong parental commitment to seeing through the goals of the educational system. Second, there are, in general, very strong private supplements to public systems of education. It's interesting to read one account called The Daily Routine of a Typical High School Student, and this is set in Korea. It starts with 5.30 a.m. to 6.30 a.m., gets up and studies for an hour or so. The student is then at school through 7 p.m., and when you look at the hours 7 p.m. to 10 p.m., they're described as follows studies alone or with visiting private tutors at home, or participates in the study programs held at school, or attends private preparatory schools to take extra lessons in at least two subjects, or goes to tutor's place to get private lessons. The tutor may or may not be the student's school teacher. So this system has a strong private component and also a strong decentralized component. East Asian educational success really has been one of the more miraculous stories of the 20th century, even if it has sometimes been quite hard on the students. To read more about East Asian educational success and its role in economic growth, I recommend starting with these two sources.